the most extensive zones of destruction on planet Earth. Its most visible features are the hundreds of volcanoes that line the shores of the Pacific Ocean. They form an arc which extends 25,000 miles from South America along America's northwest coast to Alaska and then down through Russia, Japan, and Southeast Asia, all the way to New Zealand. Cataclysmic eruptions have occurred here throughout history. August, 1883, Indonesia. The Krakatoa volcano blew itself to pieces creating the loudest sound in recorded history. June 1991, the Philippines. Mount Pinatubo blasted debris 22 miles into the atmosphere. Suffocating ash swamped over 2,500 square miles. And in May 1980, Mount St. Helens caused $1 billion of damage. The ever-present threat from these volcanoes makes it essential for scientists to understand the forces that power them. The investigation begins here, in Alaska. This land of rugged beauty marks the most northern extreme of the Ring of Fire. 75% of all the volcanoes in the United States are situated in Alaska making it a perfect laboratory for volcanologists. The first step is to discover how the Ring of Fire's giant volcanoes form. We're headed to Augustine Volcano, which um, lies in Cook Inlet, and it's a uh, part of the chain of volcanoes that extends all the way down into the Aleutian Islands. It's a 60-mile journey out across the frigid Alaskan water. In the distance, the volcano soon appears. There's the Augustine Volcano over there. It's going to be a perfect day to visit. From high above the clouds, Dr. Bull can gain a clear view of the volcano's distinctive outline. Augustine is a stratovolcano the type of volcano found all around the Ring of Fire. Stratovolcanoes are quite unique in that they are shaped as beautiful cones, and Augustine is a perfect example of that. Augustine last exploded in January 2006, the most recent of seven eruptions here since 1935. Over the years, solidified lava flows have gradually built up on the volcano's flanks. To investigate what makes these volcanoes so dangerous, Dr. Bull climbs high up on the side of one of these lava flows. This lava is uh, made up of blocks. There's bits that are a uh, little denser than others, and you can see there's a lot of different pieces to it. So we call this a blocky lava flow. This blocky lava provides a crucial clue as to why the Ring of Fire volcanoes can be so deadly. This lava is more thick when it comes out of the volcano. And its thickness will have an effect on how it runs down the slope. The thickness or viscosity of lavas can be shown um, in a number of ways. Hawaii lavas are quite runny. Honey is a perfect example of that. If you have the volcano putting out Hawaii-like lava, it's going to run quite easily down the rock. Whereas if you have something more like these blocky lavas, they're going to be a little bit more like peanut butter. They'll still run, but the viscosity is much greater. The viscosity of lava is primarily determined by the amount of silica it contains. Silica is the most abundant mineral in Earth's crust. The more silica, the thicker or more viscous a lava is likely to be. Hawaiian lava contains little silica, so it's runny 
and produces a relatively flat landscape. But ring of fire lavas are rich in silica, making them sticky and less able to flow, creating tall, cone-shaped stratovolcanoes. During the 2006 eruption of Augustine, thermal imaging cameras were used to study the volcano. They showed this sticky lava building up layer upon layer. But the thickness of this lava also makes these volcanoes lethal. Because these volcanoes have lava that is thick, things don't move through them very well. And bubbles of gases can build up. Deep in the earth, under immense pressure, molten rock called magma contains dissolved gas. But as this magma rises, the pressure decreases. This drop in pressure means bubbles of the gas begin to appear, just like opening a bottle of soda. If the magma is runny, these gases can safely escape. But in sticky, silica-rich ring of fire magma, the gases can get trapped, often with terrible consequences. It's like trying to have a bubble move through peanut butter. It won't happen quite so easily. So there's a lot of pressure that builds up. And once that pressure builds up, it reaches a point where it can't take all that pressure anymore. The result? Giant explosions caused by the catastrophic buildup of gas inside the molten rock. This is the reason Ring of Fire volcanoes can be so dangerous. But it's not usually the initial explosion that kills. It's what happens next. Those explosive eruptions can create plumes that go up for tens of miles. When these plumes run out of energy, they can collapse back down the sides of the volcano in a superheated avalanche of ash and gas. With temperatures of 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit and speeds over 100 miles per hour, these flows destroy everything in their path. A terrifying consequence of the explosive eruptions caused by gases building up inside thick lava. In the next stage of her investigation, Dr. Bull searches for clues as to how this sticky lava forms. On Augustine's lower slopes, she hunts for lava samples from inside the volcano. This giant block of solidified sticky lava was once molten magma deep underground. It was blasted out here during an eruption, and it came with some intriguing evidence. So what I'm seeing in this rock is a lot of minerals and a little bit in some cases of hornblende. The presence of these hornblende crystals provides a crucial clue to how the magma formed. This is important in telling us something about magma conditions where the hornblende crystallized. Hornblende is a mineral that only forms in the presence of water. These hornblendes show water exists deep in the earth. Scientists suspect this water plays a crucial role in creating the magma that powers volcanoes. Deep underground, rocks are hot and semi-solid. It might seem that the presence of water would cool them down. But that's not what happens. This water, which is under huge pressure, alters the rock's structure and causes them to melt, forming plumes of magma. This molten rock soars up to the surface, building giant volcanoes. Without water causing magma formation deep underground, these ring of fire volcanoes would simply not exist. A lot of this process we're still working on and we don't understand, but there's a fair amount of it that we do. And water has a very significant role in when and how uh, rocks melt. The investigation into why the ring of fire is so dangerous has uncovered two important pieces of evidence. 
Blocky lava flows are evidence of thick, viscous magma which traps gases inside volcanoes, leading to explosive eruptions. And hornblende crystals reveal that water deep underground encourages the formation of the magma that powers the volcanoes. Next, the geology detectives figure out how this water gets underground and make a remarkable discovery, the chemical signature of microscopic organisms inside the volcanoes. All around the ring of fire, explosive magma is forming deep underground, fueled by water. Solving the mystery of where this water comes from is the key to how scientists will figure out why the Ring of Fire is so dangerous. The investigation now turns to Mount Lawson, an active volcano in Northern California. Surrounding the volcano are bubbling hot springs, boiling mud, and volcanic vents called fumaroles, belching superheated steam and gas. All this thermal activity is driven by the immense heat rising from magma deep underground. By sampling the gas coming from these fumaroles, scientists hope to discover the source of the water which causes the magma to form. This device measures temperature. The temperature of this fumarole is 92.5 degrees C, about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So just about at the boiling point for this elevation. And that's what we want for a good gas sample, a good boiling fumarole. So you can see what's happening at the surface here, all the steam coming out of the ground, but it's the gases that are along with this steam that we look at closely. And the composition of those gases tell us about what's happening at various depths beneath the ground where we can't see. Tests on these gases, collected from volcanoes all around the Pacific Ring of Fire, have revealed something surprising. The gases contain carbon-12, a type of carbon that comes from living organisms. The specific levels of C12 found here are the unique signature of tiny sea organisms called phytoplankton. Billions of phytoplankton live in the ocean. As they grow, they absorb carbon-12 into their cells. When they die, they fall to the bottom, forming layers of sediment. In this way, their carbon-12 is transferred to the seafloor. Intriguingly, scientists have found this same carbon-12 pouring out of volcanoes all around the Ring of Fire. Volcanoes of the Cascade Range have carbon dioxide that's very rich in carbon-12, and it's almost like you're, you're cooking oceanic sediments that are rich in phytoplankton.